see how much uh, the Andre has paid testimony to how much uh, glaciologists and climate scientists can learn from historians. I hope that what I, I have to say uh, illustrates the inverse point. Um, and we will have the coins out there again that Donald Squires has kindly brought for us to look at. The actual coins which produce the actual pollution that we measured as we're about to show you. Uh, so this is w a, a, an amazing uh, set of historical results of great import, we think, for economic history. The lead author is my friend Chris Lovelock, who is here present virtually on uh, Alex's phone uh, via Skype, so he can join in in the questions. And uh, this is about a, an epochal shift in the European economy from the gold standard of the late Roman period to a brand new silver standard, a coinage founded on silver. And this has been the subject of debate for well over 100 years. Why did it happen? When did it happen? What did it mean? Um, to our delight, we think we have an answer to that. Since the great Belgian uh, economic historian Henri Perrin, most economic historians have talked about this shift from gold to silver as decline, as the uh, Roman economy going down, down the hill, the uh, medieval, early medieval economies in the rubble of the Roman Empire, things are imploding, they, they can't, there's, no more, there's not much gold in, in Europe, they, they, they're recycling Roman gold, they're running out of gold, desperation, you can't buy a cow with a gold piece, so in desperation they make these little silver coins by finding old Roman candles and melting them down. The medieval economy was totally imploding according to this traditional vision in the 680s. Then, in the 1990s, French archaeologists identified a, the archae archaeologically a mine that we knew about in the text in a town called Mel, which is the corruption, the French corruption of the Latin word metallum, which means mine, just uh, west of Poitiers. It happens to be the parliament seat of someone named Sigolène Royal, who was very famous in France a few years ago. And uh, the big debate began to be, when was this mine operating? It was never operated by the Romans. It was clearly operating in the 800s and probably the 700s. Could it go back to the 600s? Very hard to tell with a mine because when you mine, you knock down all the rock and you destroy. So if you're mining something in the 600s, when you get there in the 700s, you take out all the 600s evidence to get it out of the way to get to the, the ore. So the uh, Florian Terrejo, the, the wonderful French archaeologist and geochemist who's worked on this, has identified radiocarbon from the 7th century there, but they're trees that were burned to process the ore. So a tree could have been 100 years old when you chopped it down to uh, process it. So mysteries. Could Mel have already been opened in the 600s? It's possible. It's possible. I took this photograph when I went, crawled in there to see it myself. I like to see th things myself. Um, remember that it's off the screen, but in many places, lead and silver are found together in the Earth's core. So when you refine silver, what you're doing is getting the lead out of it. And so the production of silver produces a lot of lead, and a lot of um, lead is re released into the atmosphere. If we have a new mine producing completely new stocks of metal, that's a completely different picture from going around and me melting down Roman candlesticks. It suggests an economy which is beginning to grow and in which they need more coins. That's a rather daring hypothesis, but bear with me. So here you see the atmospheric circulation uh, reconstructed based on modern atmospheric uh, patterns with the climate reanalyzer developed at the Climate Change Institute of the University of Maine. And you can see that the prevailing winds in the summertime go directly past Mel toward uh, our Alpine peak at Colimifeti, right on the Swiss border. This is the high resolution, not yet the ultra high resolution that we're still refining. This is the high resolution record for the uh, lead deposits at Mel between 1 and 1,000. And you see the Merovingian, the, the first dynasty of the French kingdom, and the Carolingians, the second one right there. And you see peaks jumps in lead pollution, atmospheric lead pollution, arriving at the top of this alpine peak, uh, Monte Rosa, in the 600s. And that is the time when the numismatists have shown, by studying the coins themselves, sometime in the 600s, they shifted to silver coinage. The Carolingians built a not bad little empire that covered most of Europe, also based on a silver coin. You can take a look at a silver coin from Mel of the Carolingian dynasty in Donald's uh, wonderful selection. 
So remember this. So we actually see appearing in our ice core the pollution spike when the mine is open and they began refining the lead ore to make the silver to transform the European uh, economy from a gold to a silver standard. And not only can we see it and date it, we discover the process. If you look, you'll see there are two peaks in the lead core, in the, six, in the lead pollution, in the 600s. Now, we had known, the numismatists knew quite well, that the Merovingians did not go, the, the French kings did not go immediately from gold to silver. There was an intermediate stage when, I think, it's pretty clear, they needed more coins. They couldn't get more gold, so they started adulterating the coins. I was foolish and never looked up what they were adulterating it with. The, they started adulterating it sometime in the 620s, 630s, 640s. It turns out the chemical analysis showed they're adulterating it with silver. And so the first stage in the shift of the European economy from the Roman gold standard is the expansion of the coinage by adulterating one precious metal with another precious metal, which they have just discovered in massive quantities at, in very pure levels in this place about 40 kilometers west of Poitiers in west central France. And that is the origin, and that is the very pale gold coin that you have seen in Donald's collection. Then in the 660s to 680s, they shift, the experiment's successful. People are accepting the silver gold coins, and they just shift to completely silver coins because they have this bonanza of silver coming out of their own mines. And so the monetary supply, the monetary stock of Europe expands, and we can see and time the expansion from the layer counting that was accomplished by our postdocs working on this ice core. We can track, we can date, and confirm and correct, to a certain extent, the datings and the understanding of the numismatists based on the technical features of the coinage that you saw. So this is just a, a, a quite remarkable shift in our knowledge about one of the most important changes that would affect the European economy between the fall of the Roman Empire and the Crusades. Within decades, Europe was covered with little trading settlements, little places like Dorstad, Dor City, or Comacchio in this little dirtball place called Venice, or this place, Lundenwick, which you can see in the 680s there. It would later become London. So the little trading towns with the new currency begin to spring up all over Europe and would give rise to bigger trading towns, all built on the new silver standard of the European economy. And out of these would come the European economy that we become familiar with from the late Middle Ages. And the very origins of this economic shift to silver have now been documented in the historical ice core project. Thank you.